impossible to live stream because um, the, there's absolutely zero phone signal here. It actually shows an emergency up to this. They're like way out of the BFE of everywhere. And uh, so this is, let give you a look around a little bit. So we're going to be on Megalith today. Um, what we've got, some of this is monumented here. It's an old stop and camp before they head up into the, the other regions that's up in, above this. So we've uh, made it up to the edge of the escarpment. Pretty cool. You got this massive old pompous grass growing here. There's my beautiful lady, Miss Tara. And I'll just take you up in here with us. Excuse the shake, and I'm not going to mind the phone a whole lot. We really want to get in here and get out. So, but just to give you an idea of the rock, so these are. The same rocks we looked at from back there, they look small. And now you can see as we start to approach them, the size of this stuff. I'll try to hold this level and smooth. But see, and all throughout, there's assemblages throughout this whole thing. And these are monumented stacks that were put here for a reason to guide you up to the megalithic trail and you can see beautiful hole all the way through the stone right here right behind the monument so this is how you track the megalithic stuff and you got a triangle up above us that's positioned that basically means the same thing as a pyramid that's going to tell us there's actually a something major and subterranean in here. So we'll go through this stuff. You can see it's not little. Back here. See all around us is this these gigantic assemblages of rock like this vertical piece. So on this other side they made a record of themselves and these other beings that obviously aren't human. They show you humans. Get through this mesquite here. You can see these are really massive. But on this side, you have people and animals, and you have the symbol for either up or down, along with the animal glyphs. So that's telling you to go up this panel and read it. You've got probably a deer, two men with spears, but they, they have, it shows you they have five toes. They're not always drawn with toes, but it designates this as a human five toes. So here's another herd of deer, obviously. And this guy's got a bow and he's drawn there. This is a hunting scene. But then you come over here and you got a couple of crosses and deer's like up the hill. Then you got these other guys. And they're not drawn like a human. Each one has a hook back and a, and a vertical rod and three toes. Here's another one. One, two, three toes. One, two, three toes. And then for a real explanative version, they give you this guy. And he's done in high detail. And what you'll see up here is he doesn't have a normal head. He has a head that's like reptilian looking head with an eye. Then he has three toes. And he carries a rod and his hands hooked in. And that's how all of, all of them are featured. Humans are in different hunting positions. Let's see, for comparison... Then you got a regular old human over here, five toes shown. Now his aren't indicated. Same thing. So you've got this thing facing one direction this way. It's not a human. Then you have a human, same position facing this way. And this would probably tell you this is a, a meeting or a greeting. 
right in the middle of them is an animal that's not a deer. And it, it looks, it has four huge stubby feet. And it's got a body that runs up like this. And then it disappears into this crack feature. And we can't tell. But this looks like the base of either what would be, uh, well, a heavy body animal, like an elephant or a mastodon or something like that. Not, not lightweight like the little deers, the little peg legs are. And he's a main feature in between these two sets of characters. So we got guys with three feet, guys with five, or guys with three digits, I'm sorry, and guys with five digits. So this panel says to read it uphill. That's what that spiral is all about. If you guys have all kinds of theories, but that's what it really is. And we go up into this split. And we get to see the good. See, where were the three finger guys from? So then you've got this thing that looks like a craft with a field or haze and then rays or legs below it. And this is a lone glyph up here above everything else. And then you have a symbol for the star. Then you have symbol with an X and it's got a connective line and a throw-off line and a throw-off line. These are like pull signs. Then you have a little circle with two swoops. And you have another. These should be constellation symbols. And it's talking about this object. So I hope I can see it in the camera. I can't see what the camera's looking at. So this object. And that's the top of this glyph panel. Okay, the neat thing though kind of see above how big this stuff really is so the neat thing is above all this is for one a megalithic monument that's really cool and uh, like a dolmen a little different but beyond in the upper valley is the remnants of dinosaurs and um, even well the bones and things are laying there but even nests with the eggs still in them and uh, that's really really outrageously unusual but they're there and so we don't think we're going to make it all the way into there today but we'll get close so and then this is interesting to see these are nodules of a material called greenstone and this material always contains gold always in some amount trace or whatever but this is a nodule and you see it's high in iron and these form inside the belts and beds of this around here. And so they could have been mining this, so, which puts it right back to the Sumerian Babylonian. Animals. This is the first actual monument, the megalith. You can see it right there. I'll come up to it. And this is a hand handmade. It's hidden behind this tree. It's actually on a big square block. And then it's been slid off and positioned there. And it's got the little chink stones underneath that we look for verification. So if you look, there's a, a rock under there on three rocks. I'll just take you right in. So there's a large geometric stone with the top plate. Then you have underneath. And then right here, you'll see a rock. It's sitting on littler rocks. And then this one as well is positioned on small stones. That's to stabilize it. Those are chinks. They're called a chink. Or wedges. You'll see there's one under each thing. And that's to make this thing where it's completely stable, even though it's really precarious. It's meant to be seen from the valley floor um, as we look up and direct us on our route up here on, this, on the megalithic trail. And I'm into some site associated with those real weird glyphs. So I guess I can do this and show you so... So yeah, this can we even get a good sight to see if this thing's looking around. Yeah, so okay, here we go. So these guys right here. So you see this rock is positioned on small rocks. This rock is in here positioned on small rocks. And you've got up on top this one the same thing. And this is a huge plate. I mean this is probably a twenty ton plate. But not about a twenty ton block. So and this, we're on top of some real precarious stuff up here. There's no way, you know, it's not easy to lift in position. So, but that's just one. I mean, that's the main one we look for. Oops. I'm not sure we're still recording. 
So that's the main one we look for to get us on the trail and get going. That's basically the trailhead. And then there's subtle other monuments that are indiscriminate to most people, but you have to know what to read that tell you, you know, how to proceed and where to go from this point. Because as you can see, it's not really, there's no other just direct indication. But, um, but yeah, there's monuments all the way up this. I'll let you kind of go with this here, I guess. Here's your board hole, just like the hole down below. Just tells us we're still on the right track. And this is actually going to a um, going to a hole that would be up here. So that first triangle designated that we have a subterranean chamber. And then we found ore that looks like it's mining ore, or that could be. And then um, so we have to kind of expect that there would be a hole associated with mining. And this stuff's going to date 8, 10,000 years old. So it's not, this isn't stuff from any recent habitation. Matter of fact, associated glyphs and artifacts from Mexico that are the same thing go to 9,000 to 11,000 years old. There's a vertical plate of rock position. And that's another indicator for being on this top trail. So there's always two kinds of trails. A monumented major trail for animals and a more indiscriminate trail, not near as distinct. It usually goes through really rough stuff. And that's got all the code on it, which gives you all your instructions. So now we'd be on the animal portion. And we had just come off when we were down below, off the, um, the portion that regards itself to you know, the code. So right here in front of us, we have a heart with top lobes. We have a shallow notch. Shallow notch would be regarded into two hills. The entrance is on the right hill. It's a steeper hill. Could be one of the ones we're on or in the next saddle. And then we have other monumentation over here. That's a sea turtle on the back of a larger sea turtle. So each one of these things tells you information. So the larger sea turtle is obviously in a beach position to lay. The smaller tur turtle is in regard to what she's laying. And then so it tells you behind and down. And then we have this heart. And so the actual trailhead is right next to these rocks. And you'll come up and you'll see this heart in front of us made by two stones. And that V that's shaped down is your alignment. So that's what you will take an alignment off of. So as we move, the heart will turn into something else. See, because it's made out of two stones. And as we move back, we take that form and we put it back into an equilateral heart. Close to, which is about here. And you move up until the geometry is correct, which is about there. And this is where we would bisect a line right through that gap. And it shoots us a straight line right through here. And we're going to find this saddle. And in the right-hand butte is going to be where they want us to go underground. And we're on the exact perfect point of perspective. We look to the right at our turtles. And we have a triangle of light. Okay, that's because we are where we're supposed to be. So this is a verification. It's called a window or solar marker. And it's in regards to gold normally. So that's how you, de you decipher these trails. Um, we hope to live stream today. I wish we could have because I could have taken these through monument by monument. We just don't have that much phone storage and video time. So, so this is the way it's got to be. Hopefully you, you got a good look at, at the way these things work, at least up to this point. So we're going to continue and just make some tracks. We'll be passing a lot more monuments. And um, I'll restart if something interesting shows up. Okay, we've come a little farther up the hill now. And um, we've been following the monuments and megalith. Um, up this here and everything's been telling us to yield to the right to the right to the right so we've been stayed on that alignment and I started the camera because this is where it takes us to and uh, you'll see now up ahead of us we've got uh, an outcrop that kind of looks like a an old turtle's head with a beak and mouth open well that's in regard to an open mouth 
turtles in regard to the turtles below and as well the turtles nests are buried and they sub submerge themselves they go underground they go under the water okay so what we're coming to at this edge is a is a is a plain path that's got large rock borders it's real old and as we approach to it we have a decision so it goes two directions one through this natural gateway or it's actually positioned you can see the, the positioning stones here so this is kind of a gateway and the area here is a receiving pad or a loading pad or whatever and it, that's that's marked by the monument that's on the edge up there and there's a slot to go through and progress to something else which is probably sleeping or whatever so what we're going to do is we're going to work our way up here real quick and i'm going to show you when we crest this, we can go to the right or to the left, but we're going to go straight over because I want to show you something. So from this position, you can see. So down below, I showed you that that monument that showed what could have been two outcrops of the saddle. And what we've got here is one outcrop, the saddle, and then the other outcrop. And you'll notice that the steepness and ruggedness of this outcrop in regard to this side matches. So even the angle there versus the angle on that side is the same as what we saw on the outcrop below. And remember when I said that when we get up there, the one on the right is going to be rougher. And you can see it's a lot rougher with rock. We also have a pure white rock positioned laying on the ground just out front of it. And you'll notice that from there is a level pad that goes all the way back around up here to the loading area, which is all defined by a lot of large boulders all the way around it. So this is all features made by the ancients to load and offload. And this material would have been excavated out from where this natural hill was, and kicked out that way to make a flat ramp over to the other knob, which is where they tell us the doorway is. So to find information regarding that doorway, we would follow this around. So I'll give you a skyline. There's our mouth monument that's telling us, and it's not the, the eyeball looking mouth monument, it's actually the turtle's head stash, so it's telling us what's, what's under it. And then we're gonna follow this manufactured little trail here around the corner, and it's gonna probably just kinda end or terminate. Because <clears throat> this is just to read from. So this is gonna be our next point of looking. This is where we're meant to see the white rock in the cube. Okay, so you have a cubicle, which means room or structure. So you have a white rock as an attention getter. If you look real close to us, we have another rock that's been placed position has a double pointer on the back. So they're actually telling you there's more information, there's other sites, and there's more holes and things going that direction to the left. But we stay in regard to our, to our site here. This has obviously been put here to block our travel. So we're going to do the natural thing and follow down and around which is still on our manicured trail, or manufactured. And these will always be pretty nice to walk on. They're never hard. And that takes us down into here to another little rock perimeter. It tells us to look up and note monumentation again. And that's what each time to do, because each point of perspective, each time you change perspectives on a monument, it turn, can turn into something else and give you new information. So the proper point of perspective is the absolute key to reading any of this stuff. I'm gonna go a little quick here. I'm gonna go quicker than I normally would because I'm not stopping to read the other stuff. So yeah, we've already got a little pointer on top. So there's no telling what type of an entrance is here without more uh, reading and looking at the monumentation that's here. But there's a lot of placed rock I can already see. But there'll be information here to where a person could, or a small group of people could excavate directly into this doorway. It might be a 10, 10 or 20 foot shaft or an attic, we don't know which yet.
nothing else spectacular up here. So we'd have to rely on other information. It's probably a vertical shaft going straight down to the top of this. And then there'll be a side at it. So you'd add a winch set on top. And you'd have an adit that comes in from the side to use that. And that probably would have been deep beneath where our pad is here or to one side. Anyway, that's, that's at least one little trail from where they've told us about this to getting here to this point. Um, from this, it would be evaluate the other surrounding monuments, get the information, and, um, and then to scan the thing probably to verify that, which is what we usually do and how I learned to, to troubleshoot a lot of this or to verify it, you know, by running uh, redundant tests one against the other whether it be the monumentation and the alignments, um, what we think of our theory, and then what the geo equipment will show up. And if those things match, then you've got a, a working understanding. So, but like the vertical plates that are down here, there's one you can see on the left that's got a split and a large slab hanging. Um, those aren't accidental. So that's Mother Nature didn't do those. Those are all lining up with individual plates, places. So we use surrounding monumentation like that to, uh, to differentiate the location or they'll be able to tell exactly how much debris is even over something or if it's floods with a solid rock mass or if it's floods with back so okay just thought I'd fire back up real quick so it took about two minutes and um, we already figured out where the door is into that hill I've been showing you and, uh, and right now I'm standing on the fill right in front of it it's pretty dangerous <laughs> so this is actually the fill material. This is what's covering the entrance. And it goes from about 20 feet above my head to about 20 feet below my feet. The large rock you see here with all the holes in it and all this, all this large rock, and I'll move back for another perspective, all the way up, these, this, all this covers the entrance. And then that one's set on top is the top of the trap. You can see it looks just like a guy. Wow, it's a cone head. Looks like a guy with a elongated skull with a grin and a pointy nose. So this is your mine. This is who owns this stuff. And this is probably a cache, not the actual mine, but a cache of whatever they mined for these guys. Um, what you see next to you is really Herculean stacking. So it's not natural. Everything in here lays in flat belts. And when it breaks, the pieces slide down, but they're, they're always in layers. This is all sedimentary rock. So nothing is sitting. You can see the vein here to the rock is like this. Okay, so all this has been placed, one on top of each other, the whole thing. And this over to my right, you can get a lot better example of it. And so you have all this rock mass that's above Terra. This is a death trap as well. And you have the big boulder set in the top of it. It's all loose, just rubble. And then that rubble is on top of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine big stones that are all just stacked on one another. And they're all keyed into position on this slope. And what you'll notice is the slope angles toward back toward me. And so if I start to dig all this out, all this mass comes this way. So they've really trapped this entire top of this hill is trapped. And I'll try to come back to give you a little better perspective. Kind of hard to make out. So this is the rubble pile. Goes up in between. Here's the two. And you'll notice the color difference. So this is the native color here. Is patina is this orange. But if you break it, it's whiter. So all the material in the middle is, is white like that. All of it. Because it's all been rolled and disturbed in place. This stuff was pulled and set back into position to be loose and to be a trap like this. So everything would have been, you know, was made... This way, it's all been stacked up this way on its grain, so it's real strong. But that's that's how you couldn't dig into the shovel. You couldn't even get a piece of heavy equipment here. It'd take 200 people, just like it took to build it, or whatever. As you can see, it's in a really precarious position and really steep. But they'll position all this amount of rock on top to prevent anybody from getting back into this. Okay, so I started camera back up to show you this monument. 
Um, I was looking at it back from the other hill. This is a equilateral triangle with the right corner knocked off to make a double. And you've got a shadow triangle below it. Looks like a shaft symbol down into it. Triangle means supported tunnel structure. Okay, so not the room. The room is a cube. So this is an entrance to something major, a major tunnel feature. We look to the left, and we see another triangle, and we see a long shaft supported tunnel feature, supported uh, at it, or whatever. But that's telling us what to expect. So, And this is major. So it leads from the other one. Remember I said it gives instructions that there's more here. And now we're beginning to read to the left, and this is what we're going to go is find more of this type of stuff on this nature, which seems to be larger gravity than what we just looked at. Note here. Um, so as we approached and we got closer, and we come up to the triangle and what looked like a shaft from over there, we have a, a rock on top, little monument, blah, blah, blah. And then there's these three cuts in this rock. And this is going to be an attribution to who they're mining for again. The three fingers on the glyphs. And you'll look at these things, and um, they don't really appear to be natural, just cuts in the rock. You got another little swoop up there. But even if they are natural, that's what it's in regard to. And this, the symbolism is the same as what's on, um, on a monster can. So we've all seen a can of monster, and you wonder what that is, where that comes from. That's the three-fingered symbolism. That's... That's the thing with three fingers that that went about and made the people mine that came from the other worlds and whatnot, the demons. Um, so it's, it's also associated with all kinds of dark and negative crap, but in this case it's more likely either chiseled out on a natural feature or a natural feature used to designate that this is of the three fingers. So it's like the last hill that just sent us over here had a conical head uh, figure on it. Um, not like a human, but more like the cone heads of Homo capensis. Um, are those, you know, the, the remnants of the Anunnaki or, or their offspring or whatever? And then that would be basically who this is attributed to. So they're telling us the same thing. Men with three fingers, with a conical head. You've got the cone heads up here. Then you've got monumentation right next to the triangle right there. And this is now, it's an open sleeve of a book from this angle. So that tells us some different information from a different perspective. But they're telling who it's attributed to. So we're going to go ahead and, and follow this out and see. So there's two trails here as well. There's the cube to the cubicle. This is the way to the top entrance. So we have two ways we can go here. Um, I haven't really decided on my way. Um, we could take the animal trail around or we'll take the coded trail. So the coded trail is being designated by this rock up here. And since I don't know what's where we'll see what's up here okay so now it's a diamond okay, that tells us who this is this is the creator so this is to their creators and it's telling you this flat pad which is cleared which is most likely location of another vertical shaft just like we said below the triangle will lead to the to the top shaft which is probably right here and then let's go back down baby we'll follow the cube around real quick So we'll just drop down here and follow the cube trail. This will go to the same feature. One's going to be the entrance to a lower attic, which could be anywhere we're walking on right now. Which probably is, well, here we go. See the monument standing up right there? All balanced on end. There we go. Okay, this is showing us how to get to the attic. And then you line up. And there's another one there. So these are placed to be seen from below. This is an animal head as we turn the corner. Long snout looks like a. It's got a nose, an eye, a mouth. It looks like a what? Some kind of. Long, slender-nosed animal. Looks like almost like a horse skull. Anyway, the triangle would peak on it. Look over that triangle. See another triangle. Okay, so the, the shaft is here. 
and then the adit is in line with these triangles, probably at a lower region or spot. So either behind us here or even here. As Tara and I moved onward, we passed many other monuments, but one to note was this medium-sized dolmen balanced on its little edge and perched on top of another rock you can see its grain is running vertical instead of horizontal moving on to this gateway monument with a man's face on the left and a pointed top moving through this we peered to the left and saw this terrapin a box turtle but on top its shell you'll notice four iron balls with one missing with a third from the left now the interesting thing about this is you also look below the turtle and you'll notice four iron stains or pits in the stone with one of them missing again third from the left. The chances of this happening naturally are just astronomical. The final monument of interest that we witnessed at the load area which is not coincidental was this large sculpture or or monument of a, what appears to be a dinosaur, like an ankylosaur, with a pack or a load on his back. Um, there's a lot of evidence here, not only reptoid or reptilian type beings, but as well people living alongside dinosaurs. 